Now we're going to jump into some of the latest technology in our design, photography, and video segments. And we're going to start with design. I'd like to invite up my colleague, Michael Ninnis, to share our latest innovations in the 2015 release for print, graphic, and web design. Michael. Thank you, Scott. It's an honor to be here today, and I'm excited to show you some of the many ways that we've modernized Adobe Illustrator. Specifically, we've been focusing on increasing performance and precision. Let's take a look back in the past and remember what it was like to pan and zoom in older versions of Illustrator, like in CS6. So here we are in Illustrator CS6, and my document is zoomed up to 300%. Let's do something very simple and just fit it back into the window. Command zero. If you've been using Illustrator for a while, you're familiar with that delay, that pause. It has to redraw the screen every time I change my zoom level. Let's zoom in again, Command plus, and again you see that delay. That gets pretty annoying that every time I do something as simple as zooming in and out, my flow is interrupted because I have to pause and wait for Illustrator to catch up with me. Let's see what panning is like in the older versions of Illustrator as well. So I'll take my hand tool and I'll just move the artwork around the screen. And you can see there's a noticeable lag as Illustrator struggles to keep up with me. And then when I do let go of the mouse, I have to wait for that art, artwork to redraw again. So let's take a look at what it looks like to do this now in the new version of Illustrator. Illustrator CC 2015, the fastest version of Illustrator ever. So let's do the same thing we did just a moment ago. Let's do Command-0. Now that happened so fast that if you blinked, you would have missed it. So let's zoom back in and out multiple times. And you'll see every time I press Command plus or Command minus, there's no more delay. Let's see what panning is like. Zoom up if I get my hand tool again and click and drag. You can see I can pan the artwork around the screen smoothly. So Illustrator CC is now 10 times faster than CS6. So how is this possible? Illustrator CC is now using the power of the GPU to render the vector graphics to the screen instead of the much slower CPU. If any of you have been using older versions of Illustrator on newer hardware, like on an iMac 5K or a PC connected to a 4K monitor or higher, you may have noticed that those older versions of Illustrator are pretty slow on those modern hardware devices. It's because there are so many more pixels to draw. But the new Illustrator, CC, powered by the GPU, it's 10 times faster than CS6. But we didn't just stop focusing on performance. We've been focusing on precision as well. And let me give you an example of what I mean. I'm going to move back over to this old version of Illustrator, CS6, and I'm going to zoom in on the illustration and the eye. Let's zoom in as far as we can, which is 6,400% in past versions. Now, when I zoom up, I can see that there's some mark in that eye, that black squiggle, but I can't quite make out what that detail is. So let's move over back to the new version of Illustrator, and let's do the same thing. We'll zoom in as far as we can on that eye. And this time, you'll notice <laughs> There's a surprise. Hello, Japan. <laughs> so we've increased the zoom percentage 10 times, from 6,400% to 64,000%. And at 64,000%, that opens up a whole other level of detail. That will become increasingly important as screen sizes and pixel densities continue to grow over, the, over time. Now, Illustrator is much more than a single desktop application now. It's actually a family of connected apps and services that connects your mobile apps, your desktop app, and your assets all together. All your creative assets, your fonts, your colors, your type styles, your graphics and images and more, all organized and available to you wherever you are. I'm going to give you an example of what it's like to work with this new workflow. I come to Japan often, and one of my favorite memories, of course, is when I come in the spring and seeing the spring cherry blossoms in bloom. So I'd like to create a poster 
that kind of helps me create a memory of that. I have this beautiful kanji character here that a friend has created with calligraphy for me. And I'm going to use Adobe Shape to capture it. Now, Adobe Shape is a live vector capture app. It allows me to capture shapes and forms in the real world and convert them into vector objects that I can use then in any other Adobe mobile or desktop application. So I'm going to press the plus button to create a new shape. And I'll use my camera. And again, to show you that it's a live vector capture app, I can point it to anything. And we should be looking at Adobe Shape now. Thank you. And I can point it to anything and start creating outlines. I'm going to go ahead and point it to this character, this kanji character that I want to use on my poster. And I can use my slider and slide it to the right to go from fills, from outlines to fills. Once I get a nice preview, I'll tap the button to capture that. And it's automatically starting to turn that into a vector object. I can use my finger to delete unwanted details. When I'm happy with it, I'll tap the check mark. I can go ahead and give this a name. I'm going to press the Save button. At this point, it's being saved to one of my Creative Cloud libraries, which means it's going to be available to me in any of my other desktop applications or mobile applications. I want to continue sketching out my poster idea. And to do that, I'm going to use Adobe Comp. You saw Eric use Comp earlier to sketch out something. I'm going to do a poster. So Adobe Comp, again, is a layout ideation app. It allows me to sketch out print, mobile, or web layouts wherever I am when inspiration strikes. I'm going to start a new project. And I'll choose a poster format. And I want to use that kanji character that I just captured with Adobe Shape. So I'll press on my Shapes menu and navigate to the library where I saved that. And there's that shape waiting for me. I'll tap to add it, move it down, and scale it a bit. Now I'd like to draw a circle to represent the Japanese flag. So I'll switch to the draft mode. And just using my finger, I'll sketch out a circle. And Comp automatically recognizes that and converts it to a perfect circle for me. I can tap on it to reposition it, and of course, edit it and change its color to red. Earlier, I searched within Adobe Stock to see if there were any cherry blossom illustrations that I liked. And I found several, and I saved some to one of my libraries. So I'll go to my graphics menu. Again, I'll navigate to the library where I've saved these. And there's several to choose from. I'll tap on the one that I want to use. I can then position that where I want it and scale it up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to make that circle just a little bit bigger as well and position it. So there's the basic idea for my poster. I'm pretty happy with it. I now want to send this to the desktop version of Illustrator where I can continue working on it. I can do that by tapping on the Share menu and choosing Send to Illustrator CC. It's now packaging up this file and rendering that and allowing me to uh, bring that into the desktop version of Illustrator. And here it is. Let's take a look at what it looks like once it's in Illustrator. I can look at my Layers panel. And you'll see all those three elements that I had used and created in Comp are now available to me here in the Layers panel as well. I can even edit the vector of that character that I captured with Adobe Shape. So let's zoom in and get my selection tool and select that path. And if I want to just edit it slightly, just to show that it is something that can be edited after the fact, just do a little slight tweak there. I'd like to add a title to my poster. So I'm going to get my text tool, drag out a text frame, and we'll go ahead and type the word Japan. Let's take a look at our Libraries panel for a second. This is that hub, that panel in the desktop applications where you can access all of your Creative Cloud assets that you've saved to libraries. And you'll see all those assets that I showed you in Adobe Comp are also available to me here in Illustrator. Earlier, I also created a color theme, some color swatches, and I saved a text style that I now want to apply to the title of my poster. So with one click, I get that text looking the way I want it to look. Go and reposition that. And this is looking pretty good. The last thing I, I look at that character, and I think it's just a little bit too large in relation to everything else on the poster. So I'm going to select it, 
make it just a little bit smaller, and I'm going to put it behind a rounded rectangle. I get my square tool, my rectangle tool, draw a square, position it where I want it, and then of course we'll make that character white so we can see it again. Now in Illustrator, every rectangle can have rounded corners, and you can dynamically adjust them just by clicking on this corner widget and rounding them dynamically to whatever radius you want. Let's fit back to window, and there you have it. So just in a few minutes, I started on my mobile device and captured some artwork in physical form and converted it to digital. I then went to Adobe Comp on my iPad and sketched out my idea for my poster using those assets in my Creative Cloud libraries. And then I sent it to the desktop version of Illustrator to complete it, my work. So just a great example of that connected family of desktop and mobile apps and services working together to change how I can create. Now throughout the keynote so far, you've seen several of us using mobile applications. And one of the reasons why they're so easy and intuitive to use is because they leverage the power of touch. Well, what about our desktop applications? And if we go ahead and switch to a device that I have on stage here, I have a Microsoft Surface Pro 3 on stage. That's a, a two-in-one device. So it's a device that can be both a laptop or a tablet. So it has a touch screen and also has a pressure-sensitive stylus, which I'll show in a minute. But at Adobe, we, we are questioning, like, what does it mean for touch, for touch to be available in a desktop application? And we believe the use of touch and stylus inputs is going to continue to increase over time. And we want to be at the forefront of what that can mean for our desktop products. So as you can see on this particular device, Illustrator is running on this device in full form, just like any other computer. But watch what happens when I remove the keyboard. This is now a tablet device. And you'll see that Illustrator has changed. It's into a new workspace. Standard Illustrator is still open behind the scenes. I can switch in and out of this workspace if I want to. There's Standard Illustrator again. And if I switch back to that touch workspace, you'll see it's a familiar interface, but slightly different as well. We've optimized this workspace to make it easier to take advantage of the unique properties of a two-in-one touch-enabled device. As you would expect, I can use standard gestures to zoom in and out, and of course pan the artwork. But touch means so much more than that. I'm going to give you a brief tour. I'd like to create a rather complex shape. I'm going to create a heart shape. To do that, I'm going to use a tool that's really optimized for touch. It's called the Touch Curvature Tool. And it's a lot easier to use than the standard Bezier pen tool. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to start drawing this heart. And you'll see that as I hover over the screen with the stylus, I get a preview of the path that I'm going to create before I drop the next point down. I'll go and drop that point. Because I want a heart shape, I know that that's the wrong type of handle. I need that to be a corner point. So to convert it, I simply double tap. And that converts that to a corner, hand, a corner handle. And I can just continue to draw. When I get to the bottom of the heart, again, I need that to be a corner. So I'll just double tap to convert it and go back to the beginning. If I need to edit any point on the path, I just tap and drag it and reposition it. And you'll see that Illustrator's automatically smoothing out those curves for me. I'm not having to adjust those tiny Bezier handles. That can be frustrating, especially for new users, to figure out how to control. Anyone out there know what I'm talking about? <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and change the color of this to red to complete that heart. And there's my heart shape. I can use the same pinch and gestures to actually scale the artwork and rotate it. So it makes it fun to actually be able to directly manipulate my objects directly on the screen. Next, I'd like to show you what it's like to maybe do a, a logo exploration, just using some basic shapes and see how fun and intuitive that can be. I'm going to start by drawing four different circles, and I'm going to start with the ellipse tool. Now, when Illustrator is used on a desktop computer, you have a keyboard, right? So you can hold down the shift key to draw a perfect circle. But because I'm using this as a tablet, there's no shift key. So in the touch workspace, all the tools have options in this left vertical bar here. And I can turn on the lock aspect ratio so that as I drag, I'll get a perfect circle. I'm just going to draw four circles out of varying sizes. And 
And then I'll add a few straight line segments. I'm going to use the pencil tool and just drag out a couple diagonal lines and a straight vertical line. There's the objects I want to use. They're all selected. Now I want to align their horizontal and vertical centers. Let's take a look at the touch version of the align panel. You'll see there's not a grid of nine or 12 little icons that I have to memorize what each one does. It's much more intuitive than that. If I just hover my stylus over the screen, I get a little preview of what would happen if I were to tap. So I'll tap right in the center, and I get exactly what I was looking for. Next, I want to start merging or subtracting some of these shapes into more complex shapes. If any of you have used the Pathfinder operations in Illustrator, we've taken those operations and we've put them in a tool called Shape Builder. And then I can use my stylus to merge and subtract directly just by dragging on the screen. To do that, I'm going to switch to a different color and simply drag through the objects that I want to combine. I can switch colors and just work through the object, exploring as I want. Now there's some shapes that I don't want in this logo anymore, so I'm going to switch to the subtract mode and simply drag through the objects that I want to remove. If I want to get rid of those extra lines, I can just drag through them and delete them with ease. Let's get rid of the stroke. And there's my finished logo. So in just a few seconds, starting with some basic shapes, aligning them, and then using the Shape Builder tool to work and change them. Next, let's get a little taste of the pressure-sensitive stylus and what it's like to draw directly on the screen. I'll switch to the Brush tool. And as you would expect, the harder I press, the thicker the line, the thicker the stroke. Let's go ahead and lower the brush width here and just draw in a few more leaves to complete this illustration. So I'll draw a nice big one here. And you'll see that as I'm drawing these leaves, I'm not being all that precise. Some of the paths are overlapping, some of them are open. I did this on purpose because I want to show you just a little bit more Adobe Magic. There's a tool here called the Join Tool. And with the Join Tool, I can simply drag over the paths and it automatically heals them and corrects and joins them the way they need to be joined. Go ahead and select those, get rid of the stroke, change the fill, and then to finish this off, let's go ahead and draw in those center lines. So that's just a small taste of what it's like to use Illustrator on a touch-enabled device. So you've seen that Illustrator now is a connected family of mobile apps, desktop apps, and services. I'd like to show a video that shows how a designer is using that family of connected apps and services to fundamentally change how he creates. Let's take a look. Isn't that sweet? Love that. So Illustrator CC 2015, it's 10 times faster than CS6. It's got the power of touch on Windows, and it's that connected family of mobile apps and services working together. But of course, Illustrator is not the only Adobe application that designers use. There's, of course, Photoshop. So I'd like to invite my colleague, Zorana G, to the stage, who's going to give us a tour of 
some of the many things that the Photoshop team has done to do to make Photoshop an even better tool for designers. Zorana? <laughs> Hi. Wow, it's such an honor to be here. So yeah, as Michael mentioned, uh, Photoshop is one of the top tools used by designers around the world. We care very much about what our designers think, and our team has done a lot of work in terms of integrating some of the top features that many of you guys have requested since the introduction of Creative Cloud. So I'm really excited to be here today to share with you guys some of these top features. Here in Photoshop, let's take a look at an early part of a workflow, wireframing, setting up my document. As a visual designer, more often than not, I'm presented with a wireframe like this, right? composed of many shape boxes and text boxes from which I need to fill out the detail for. Now, setting up the guides for this is pretty tedious. I'm sure you guys are familiar with this. It's about individually dragging out all the horizontal and vertical guides for each object in the document. Well, things just got really easy in the new release of Photoshop. Essentially, I have my wireframe here, select any of the objects that I want, and in a single click, generate all the horizontal and vertical guides at once. It's going to save a lot of time because I'm done. Now I can move on to the next step. Let's actually switch projects right now and take a look at this website design. You can see this website design is almost complete. In the upper left-hand corner, it's missing the final logo. has still placeholder content. In fact, it's my colleague in Japan that's responsible for this logo. So in the past, I have to leave the application, maybe pick up the phone, give them a call, check a server, or check my email to see if there's any updated content. Pretty cumbersome. Well, now in the new release of Photoshop, I'm really excited to say that thanks to Creative Suite and Creative Cloud Libraries, we have Link Smart Objects. This enables me to maintain all my assets that are linked across all my documents and my entire team all within the application. So here in my layers panel, you can see there's a small indication telling me that the file is out of sync, very similar to smart objects. Let's reveal that in the library and see if there's updated content. And sure enough here, you see there's the final logo. Now it's just simply a matter of right-clicking and saying update modified content and I have them by the most modified content, the most up-to-date content, all within the application. Any changes that are made to this asset further down the line, I can receive those updates instantaneously inside my application. And this is all due to linked assets leveraging Creative Sync. So this website design is complete now. I'm at the point where I maybe want to create a mobile version of this. You guys are probably all pretty familiar with this process. Essentially, it's separate PSDs for each iteration, each device, each resolution, landscape, portrait. This can be really cumbersome, right? I'm sometimes dealing with 5, 10, sometimes even 15, 20 PSDs at once. And when I want to see the experience and the flow across the entire design, across all my devices, it gets really cumbersome because I'm strategically laying out the files in my application so that I can position it to the, for what I want to try to communicate. I'm really excited to say that in the new release of Photoshop, something that has been a top request from our customers, Photoshop now has artboards. Artboards are amazing. They are on an infinite canvas, and you can move your artboards around freely to any position for how you want to communicate your design. Whether you're talking about multiple pages of a responsive web design, or you're talking about multiple devices, like in this case. Artboards are essentially just a special layer group. The contents are duplicated if you want to create a new artboard, and all the structure is maintained. 
I can also draw out a new artboard of any size with the artboard tool. Or, of course, we have common presets to use to apply any size. This is the Apple Watch. Really great, and more importantly, I can do all of this, view the complete flow and the experience of all my designs in a single document. Really great, really ex I'm super excited that Artboards is in here. So, this looks great, I'm, I'm pretty done with this project, and I'm at the point now where I wanna view this on the final actual device, right? You guys might remember the process here. Essentially, it's taking all those separate PSDs in the past, flattening them out, maybe emailing it to myself or whoever has the device, and then viewing it on my device. Pretty cumbersome. It gets more painful when I need to make any changes. Right? We have to repeat this process. So, now in the new release of Photoshop, we have, we're introducing a free companion app called Preview CC, which enables live mirroring of all my artboard designs on my devices. So you can see in this document, I have several different devices. I have my iPhone 6 Plus. I have several different pages of my iPhone, my iPhone 6. I have my iPad designs. Now I want to view it on the actual device. Well, thanks to Preview CC, I can. Let's jump over to my phone and see what this experience is like. So on my phone here, I have the Preview CC app, and all I have to do is log in. I'm logged in already on my desktop, and it's automatically going to find a connection. It's going to look through my document and find the artboard of the right size and display it on the right device. This supports scrolling, too, as well as swiping. Remember I had multiple comps for my iPhone 6? It just takes a split second to load. You can see I'm scrolling through all the iPhone 6 comps in that document. And what's even greater about this is it supports multiple devices. Here I actually have one device connected via Tethered, and I can also have multiple devices. I can have my iPad, I can have my iPhone 6 Plus, all connected maybe via Wi-Fi at the same time. So I can view all my designs on my devices at once. And it's live. That's the great thing about this, right? This is a live connection. So any changes that I make on my document will be reflected on the phone immediately. So let's jump back to Photoshop here on my desktop and make a really simple change. Here I have this comp. I'm going to just go ahead and hide this selected state of this button. Let's just hide it. And jump back over to my phone. And right away, you can see that the, the a change has been reflected. Immediate live updates, right? Using Preview CC, the new free companion app with the latest release of Photoshop. OK. I'm actually going to switch fields a little bit now and talk about something completely different. In this newest release, we're releasing a brand new design space. It's a technology preview. It's an early look at a streamlined experience that's targeted for designers, meaning all interactions are smarter. We only show you the tools that you need. No more clutter. Things are smarter and more streamlined, making all your day-to-day -day workflows much more efficient. Let's take a look at this. So here we're in Photoshop, and I just need to jump into the new design space preview. You can see right off the bat that things are much more modern, much cleaner, only showing you a minimal tool set, only the tools that you need on a day-to-day -day base as a designer. The right-hand side is a contextual properties panel showing you the information that you need for whatever you have selected on Canvas. Here I have a vector object selected and my vector styling options on the side. If I have my type layer selected, it switches to my type properties and then my layers down here. 
Let me show you a couple features that's going to highlight some of the efficiencies so you get an idea of what I mean about streamlined workflows. Selection, right? Targeting objects that you need on Canvas. That's something you do all day, right? In Photoshop, you guys are probably really familiar with that little toggle in the upper left-hand corner, that auto-select layer and group toggle. I'm there thousands of times a day that preferences, constantly changing that depending on whether I want to select a layer or a group. And I can't even select a nested group on Canvas. I have to move between the toggle, back to the layers panel, back to my Canvas, back to my layers panel to see if I have the right thing selected. We wanted to make this drop dead easy in design space. Let's open up my, my layers panel so you can see what I'm talking about. Say I wanted to select this group, the pill bottle group. I'll click once here, and you see I have the artboard, the top level group selected. Directly on Canvas, I double click. Now you can see I'm digging into that group. I've selected the next level group. Double clicking again, now I have that pill bottle group selected. And I can even go further and double click, and now I'm in path edit mode. I've dug deep into the, pro the, the vector so that I've automatically switched into the path editing mode. I didn't have to switch tools manually. I didn't have to know whether to choose the white arrow, the black arrow, or the move tool. There's only one move tool, and we just do the right thing. And I can escape to back out. This makes it really easy for me to focus on what's most important, what's center stage, my work. Let me show you another example, a simple styling example, so you can understand more of some of the efficiencies that we're introducing. Let's go ahead and open up my styling option. So I just want to create a few buttons here. Three buttons across the top. It's the same color as the background right now, so you can't see it. Let's go to my fill properties. Changing the color, you can see I can enter it in direct CSS values. Or I can enter in the hex code for a light gray. Further, let's add a quick one pixel stroke. I can also use CSS defined colors, the word, to describe the color. Let's just call this gray. You can see here I add that stroke. Now let me finish up the styling exercise. Duplicate the buttons across the top. Now I'm going to select all three. Now let's go and align this. I don't have to open up any panels. All the important information that I need for alignment and sizing is in the same location all the time. I'll go ahead and horizontally and vertically center this. Width. I want the width of this to be 280 pixels. Entering 280, we do the right thing. Each button is 280 pixels, as opposed to the total of all three selected. The height. For this project, I want these buttons to be exactly one-third the distance of this header. And this header is, in fact, 240 pixels. I don't have to do the math anymore, because all numeric fields support math operators. 240 divided by 3, making it super easy for me to be precise. Let's go ahead and add a radius. And I can change any of the styling options here for these three selected buttons. And I'm done. That's it. Again. Single panel. All the information I ever need is always in the same location in my properties panel. I didn't even have to select any tools. Right? I can focus on Canvas of what's important. What does this mean? This means that I minimize mouse clicks. I minimize mouse travel. And I minimize eye movement. I'm not moving from the upper left corner of my application to the bottom right and back to the upper right. I'm focused on what's most important. And therefore, all my day-to-day -day tasks are much more efficient. This is the early look, the technology preview that we're introducing in this new release of Photoshop. 
released early so that you guys can give us feedback and help us shape it to become what you need. So you can see we've been doing a ton of work for our designers, right? Starting with some of the mobile to desktop workflows that you saw both Eric and Michael show us, as well as artboards. Artboards are now in Photoshop. This is huge. Linked assets using libraries and Creative Sync. A free companion app called Preview CC that enables live mirroring of all my artboard designs. And even this early look, this technology preview of design space, released early so that you guys can give us feedback. These are all the top requested features that our designers have. And we have a lot more, all in the newest release of Photoshop. So now I'd like to introduce my colleague Keske up to the stage to talk about some of the web innovations we have for our designers. Thank you. Thank you, Zorana. あ、で、え、PSD ファイルを読み込むことができるようになっています。え、従いまして、デザインカンプから様々な情報をダイレクトに行動に適用していくことができるということになります。え、ちょっとこれは実際に見ていただいた方がわかりやすいと思いますので、ご覧いただき
たどり着いたらまあ手を離してドロップしてあげるとでデフォルトで PNG ファイルなんですけれどもこれをまあ自分の好きなフォーマットに変えてあげましょう今回 JPEG にしたいと思いますそうするとクリエイティブクラウドからローカルにファイルが保存されてそしてコードにちゃんと配置されたという状態になりますご覧のようにですね最新のドリームイーバーを使うとデザインカンプからコードにデザインをいろいろ適用していくっていう作業が圧倒的に早くなるんじゃないかなと思いますのでぜひこちら活用していただきたいなと思いますそれではここで2つ目の進化スマートフォン対応についてご紹介したいと思います昨今ですねあのウェブ制作においてスマートフォン対応っていうのも非常に重要になってきてるっていうのはもう皆さんご存知の通りかもしれませんけれどもその中でまあ画面幅に応じてさまざまに動的にレイアウトが変,変更して変化するっていうレスポンシブデザインというのが、まあ、多く採用されているのかなと思いますしかしこのレスポンシブデザインを制作するにあたって、えー、まあ最適な、えー、ブレイクポイントの見極めですとかそれからまあレイアウトの調整とか、まあ、い,いろんな,なんですなんて言いますかあの手間のかかる作業っていうものがやはり発生すると思いますそこでですねドリームイーバー CC2015 年リリースではレスポンシブデザインをよりやりやすくするための大幅な機能強化をしていますでは実際に見ていきたいと思いますまず新規作成で HTML ファイルを選択した場合フレームワークのところにブートストラップが選べるようになりましたこのオープンソースの CSS フレームワークブートストラップを使えばですねレスポンシブ対応したウェブページというのを比較的簡単に作れるという特徴がありますここからスタートしていくのもよろしいですしもう一つスターターテンプレートというものを用意しましたブートストラップを使ったテンプレートを何パターンか用意してありますのでこれらをベースにスタートしていくこともできますでは実際にポートフォリオのテンプレートを使った状態で機能を紹介したいと思いますこちらブートストラップのポートフォリオのテンプレートですすべてブートストラップコンポーネントが貼り付けられたテンプレートになっていますですのでもうすでにレスポンシブ対応になっていますねそしてですね上を確あのこの画面上部をご覧いただきたいんですけれどもこれブレイクポイントを可視化するための新しいツールビジュアルメディアクエリーバーですそしてこれ右側にですね新たにリサイズバーが追加されましたのでパソコンの画面幅そしてタブレットの画面幅そしてスマートフォンの画面幅とこういったようにですね自由に画面,画,面幅を画面幅を変えてそしてレスポンシブデザインの生命線でもあるブレークポイントを実際に目で見ながら確認して作業を進めていけるというのが大きな特徴ですでは実際に先ほどご覧いただきましたデザインカンプを少し適用したページがありますのでこちらを見ながら別のレスポンシブデザインの機能もご紹介したいと思いますご覧のようにですね大きなメイン画像が乗っかっていてそしてスクロールしていきますと2カラムのレイアウトがありそして最後フッターがありますねでパソコンの画面幅タブレットそしてスマートフォンとこのようにまあ見ていくともうすでにレスポンシブ対応していますので少しレイアウトが変わっているのがわかるかもしれませんそこでここでもう少し手を加えてみたいと思いますスマートフォンを縦に表示した時のレイアウトをちょっと変えたいなと思った時にはやはりブレイクポイントを新たに打つ必要があると思うんですけれどもこのブレイクポイントを打つ作業も非常に簡単にできますこのようにマウス操作で簡単にできますし微調整も数値入力で可能ですこのようにブレークポイントを追加しましたら次はちょっとレイアウトを変えてみましょう、えー、こちらの画像メイン画像スマートフォンの縦表示の時はまあ隠しておいてもいいかなというふうになった時はですねマウス操作でレメントを隠すとやってあげれば簡単に隠せますそしてもう少し見ていくとあここ2カラムのままですねこれちょっと狭い幅で2カラムは窮屈なのでこちら1カラムにしてあげましょう、えー、ご覧のようにグイッとマウスを使ってですね広げてあげれば
2カラムだったものが1カラムになりましたではちょっと見てみましょう、はいえー、画面幅が広い時は,時は2カラムのままですねそしてメイン画像もちゃんとありますで画面幅を少しずつ狭めてみましょうタブレットの状態ですとかそしてスマートフォンの縦の時はいちゃんと消えてるのが分かりますねそして2カラムになったものが1カラムになっているのが分かると思いますで、えーまあ、ある程度制作を進めていくと次に非常に大事なのが、えー、ブラウザーで確認するという作業だと思います、まあ、こういったブラウザーでのプレビューというものが、まあ、重要なんですけれどもちょっと面倒くさいっちゃ面倒くさいですねサーバーにいろいろデータをアップロードしてそしてスマートフォンでアクセスするなりする必要があるんですけれどもこの作業を非常に簡単にするための新機能が追加されていますそれがですね画面右下にあるんですけれどもデバイスプレビューという新機能ですこれを使うとですね非常に簡単にスマートフォンで確認することができますですので今からあのこの iPhone を使ってですね実際に今編集中のウェブページにアクセスしてどんな感じになっているか確認したいと思いますはい読み込みましたでこれはまあ複数台つなげることもできますしアンドロイドもできます特に特殊なアプリを使っているわけではありませんでご覧のようにですね意図した通り表示されているのが分かりましたでこれ単にプレビューが楽になったっていうだけじゃなくてですね実はリアルタイムで変更を確認することができます例えば今ここに「キープオンプレイング」って書いてありますけれどもこれ僕今からですねちょっと変更してみましょう今「キープオンプレイング」のところを「キープオンシンギング」とやってみましょうはいそうすると iPhone の画面の表示も変わったのが分かると思いますこのようにですねプレビュー機能もまあラ,イブライブでできてしまうっていう非常に効率的な作業が作業フローが確立できるんじゃないかと思いますはいというわけでですね、えー、ドリームイーバー CC2015 年リリースを使いますとデザインカンプからコードへの作業っていうのはまあ圧倒的に速くなるんじゃないかなと思いますしそれからレスポンシブデザインっていうのはもっともっと、えー、制作しやすくなるかなというのを期待していますそして何よりもリアルタイムなデバイスプレビュー機能を使ってどんどんどんどんですね細かいレイアウトのチェックなどをして全体的な作業効率をアップしていただければ嬉しいなと思いますぜひドリームイーバーお試しくださいありがとうございました Thank you, Kesuke So, as you can see the 2015 release Ushers in a new level of precision and performance in the design segment. Mobile and desktop apps work seamlessly, and Creative Sync makes your assets more organized and accessible. 